Hello Internet, my name is Dorky Eevee. When talking about great Disney Channel sitcoms, people tend to talk about the shows that were created between that window of late 2000s and early 2010s with the most positive endorsement. But there is one show from this era that I feel like has been forgotten in time, so I decided to talk about it. In 2009, the universe of Disney XD and skate culture collided to bring the world of children's sitcom television, the show Zeke and Luffy, co-created by Matt Deborn and Tom Burkhardt. I hope I said those right. The show lasted three seasons, airing from 2009 to 2012. It was received fairly mixed at the time by critics, and its audience was the main demographic, finding the show relatable, hilarious, and fun to watch well. On the other spectrum, children praising the show as mind-numbingly unfunny and annoying, or a mix of both. Parents had the strongest negative perception of the show, seeing the two main characters as bad role models for children because they can have no sense of responsibility during the whole show as they get into some sort of trouble every episode and never learn anything from it. And some complained about the fact that the show was filled with implied explicit words. Yeah, that was a bit <laughs> weird. These complaints didn't seem to hinder the show's popularity though during its runtime. Even now that you have to deep dive the internet to find anyone actually talking about the show, the majority of people talk about Zeke and Lupo with fondness while complaining about the fact that it's not on Disney Plus yet. I had no idea that there were still people in 2020 wanting to watch the show, but intense research on Reddit proved me wrong, so no Reddit gold for me today. <laughs> I mean, I bring up Zika Louver a lot with my friends because I just like to talk about how banging the theme song was and the fact that it gets stuck in my head every so often and doesn't leave. And I use the show a lot as my excuse for still using the words rad and wicked in my day-to-day -day vocabulary, no matter how much my friends make fun of me. Anyhow, a couple of days ago, I was listening to the Zeke and Luffa theme song because it's great, and it got me wondering if the show still holds up today. So today, let's find out! <laughs> so, Zeke and Luffa is a show that stars the two main characters, really named Zeke and Luffa. Zeke's character follows the average character trope of the teenage slacker, so he isn't extremely smart or responsible, and he loves to sit around eating or skating around town. But between the two main characters, he is probably the most level-headed, and he's kind of the leader of the duo. Luther, on the other hand, has all the same traits, but he just sprinkled a little quirky stupidness to show that he's his own person. Along with them, we have Kojo, who is the frenemy of the duo. Gosh, I have not said the word frenemy in years, and I don't think I'm going to use that word ever again. Kojo has a very big ego and it's just as big catchphrase that he needs to say all the time. Watch out! <laughs> and after binging many episodes of the show, it definitely doesn't get on my nerve. Kojo also really likes to call his girlfriends in quotes, female ladies, which is something to add to his character, I guess. Another important character includes Jin who is Zeke's youngest sister, who is a ruthless businesswoman, who is tired of dealing with her brother's shit, and many other side characters who find themselves in the rest of the series. Naturally, you would think that this show has the same basic approach to each episode, like many other Disney Channel shows, where each episode the duo skate around until they find themselves in some sort of trouble and either solve it by doing skating or not really they have found themselves in a problem and somehow reach some sort of conclusion by pure luck without ever learning any lessons from the problem they were in because they didn't realize they were in one and well yes that is <laughs> that is exactly how every single episode of this show goes. Surprisingly, the show about two skateboarders who only care about skateboarding food and girls doesn't take the audience on this lore-heavy adventure about coming of age and teenage angst. <laughs> the first episode of the show is pretty wacky. It starts off with the boys skating around a fountain doing a bunch of tricks to impress this boy whose first line is, that's money. That was money! Honestly, I'm kind of jealous that that's not my first line. <laughs> 
<laughs> in a show. And so then while they continue doing tricks for this little boy, an older man comes over and starts calling for their attention, and so they book it home to avoid getting yelled at. He did get told their address, but it's still really weird for a grown adult to follow two kids home just because he wanted to talk to them. And Ginger lets the man inside the house because she's expecting that the two are about to get yelled at for being idiots for skating on the fountain. But instead of that, the man who we get to find out is named Discount Dave wants to pay the boys to put on a skate show to promote his store, which is just really lucky for them. And Ginger being Ginger, she sees this and decides to take over the situation as manager so she can get a big sum of cash for pretty much doing nothing other than some bargaining. Neck pillow. So back to the episode, the boys are celebrating the fact that they have all this money now and a hotel room to stay in before the big event. And being Zeke and Luma, they start to act like total twit by abusing the room service available for them while gaming all night and sticking their toe into a tap because they have to do something to reach a some sort of climax in the show. And after all this chaos, it's the next day. Woo! And it's time for them to perform their skateboarding event. Even though the two are now injured because they are bloody dumb. Okay, that was a little too harsh. How do I make that nicer? Because they are silly billies. And so when they get there, they try to talk to Dave, find out they have to jump off this extreme ramp, and they're like, oh quack. But then, while they're in the middle of saying why they're not going to do the event, that's money child comes over and looks Zeke in the eyes and they have a little moment because well this kid just got his dreams crushed by his heroes because he really wanted to see them be awesome. Attention potential mattress customers, the show is now cancelled due to my Jack and Nitty brother and his dude. And also, conveniently, he's wearing a shirt that says, Don't let me down. So the boys are like, You know what? The show will go on. And so they go up the ramp to do the big jump. And they actually go down the ramp really well, even with their injuries. And it's all going smoothly, all until they screw up the landing, making them look foolish in front of everyone. But the child still thinks that they were cool in his eyes, so it was all worth it in the end for Zeke and Luther. And well after the event, Ginger pays for all the damages they caused in the hotel, leaving them with two whole quarters, our first payday. And that's how the very first episode of Zeke and Luther and I thought I was ready to call it quits after rewatching this episode and just say that it was pretty silly and weird with a simple plot and awful catchphrases and dim-witted characters and leave it there. But I somehow found myself watching the rest of the season and it caught me off guard because I don't even remember watching some of the episodes. My brain just shut off all functionality while trying to binge the show, which made it really hard for me to try to deconstruct an episode to try and talk about it, but I just kept watching. I did actually find myself a pretty interesting episode to talk about that would have been good in this video but then later on that same day i saw someone already made a video on that exact episode so that was scrapped is that there was literally no one talking about zeke and luther and then as soon as i go oh i want to make a video on zeke and luther someone beat me to it on youtube back to the show it slowly shifts from Zeke and Lufa just skating around for fun to being actually sponsored by a skating company in the later seasons while still just skating around for fun. And I was sort of waiting for the show to have the characters change and develop more. The change never really happens. I think coming back to this show, I am too used to consuming the media of shows that feed the viewers search for finding pieces of deep-rooted lore to how there is more going on than what we see. And it made me realize that I was looking way too into this show. Zeke and Luther isn't deep 
at all. Sneak and Looper is just a show about two friends who like to skate together and have fun. And that's all it really needs to be. Putting that all aside though, was Zeke and Looper really a good show? Well, while re-watching it, I did find myself being entertained by some moments in the show, but overall, I found it really boring. Like, don't get me wrong, I really admire this show, and it holds a lot of meaning to me and my childhood, but I don't- and I don't really think it's bad, but it's basically quite forgettable. I generally expected to come into the making of this video with a much more positive tone, which is why I'm finding all the things I say in this video extremely unsatisfying and underwhelming, and that's how I sum up my views on this show. It's a sitcom that I have a lot of respect for and I still like. It clearly connected with other people like it did to me, but for now, it's just not something I can find myself getting back into being interested in again. I'm just glad it's over. Well, after advent- Oh, what is- <laughs>